ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my Melania tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you how to deal with Waterfowl from multiple distances, a spirit clone attack and basically every other attack. I'll also be going in depth about phase 1, phase 2, the differences between them and how to deal with some of the mechanics inside of them. I won't be using Bloodhound Step, Pots, Summons or anything else to try and get through. Her, any of her moves like Waterfowl will just be rolling. I hope this video helps without wasting any more of your time. Let's just get right into it. Let's start with phase one and we'll start with the neutral game and approaching Millennia. So let's imagine that Millennia is this fog gate here. If you're far enough away, she won't really do anything. She'll either walk at you, run at you, or just sidewalk. She's very passive. But once you get within a certain range, it's around here, between me and the fog wall, she can decide to attack. Usually she'll respond, if she decides to attack, she'll respond with a kick or a, a swipe. So let's go over that. So I'm about to enter her potential aggro range. And she didn't aggro, and this is where you'd want to go in and attack her. If you got that close and she didn't aggro, then that's where you'd want to attack. Like that. That is one of the attacks that she can uh, close in with, that sweep and attack. This kick is the other one. Both of them can be punished, but the sweep and attack has to be reacted to. But I'll go over that a bit later but here she's not attacking so you can go in but as you're out here you're safe but if you're in this range here which is still outside of her aggro range don't S this because she can input read with a stab so this is basically just the neutral game whenever you're outside you're completely fine. And approaching her, there's different options. Okay. That's pretty much it for phase one. Very simple. So you can play very passively if you wanted. And do this. But it's, it's important to feel comfortable at all times, whether you're close or far away and knowing what she has. Now if you stay inside of this range and she doesn't do anything like this, she will eventually, randomly, eventually do something. So you, you want to re get in there, react that she's not doing done anything and attack it as fast as possible just so you don't get caught out. But uh, that's the neutral game and approaching millennia. Now we'll get on to phase one attacks and how to dodge them. All right, let's go over all of the phase one attacks. For the purposes of this, I will use a level one Uchi Katana, unupgraded, just so I do no damage and I don't transition her into a waterfowl attacks because we'll go over that later. Okay, so the two moves to watch out for, as discussed in the neutral game, is that slash, which can be punished if she doesn't follow up, which she didn't there. But she can follow up that attack, so you need to dodge it and then react, and if she follows up, you kind of want to back off, because it, it's dangerous. This attack is pretty simple to dodge. If you're far away, you can punish that pretty heavily. If you're far away when she starts that, she'll... it'll be a different looking move and she'll come flying towards you and you'll need to just do a, a double roll. That dodge left there can be punished, but only when she's finished moving. That attack there is a dangerous one. You want to roll into her shoulder like that. Her left shoulder and then roll back. And avoid that slam. It's got deceptively long range. So there you want to kind of hit her as she lands. I'll try and get it off next time it happens. 
after I attack. So always keep in mind the neutral game. Roll into the kick and attack. I should have attacked there. If you do mess that up and she does that double attack and flies back, you can punish it. So in phase one, I like to punish with two, two attacks. But if you do two attacks, you have to be very careful of her dodging right. So like that, I got greedy there. You notice how I hit her, she was dodging left, but she still had armor. If I delayed the second hit, I would have got her. Like that. There we go. But always watch out for that specifically. Follow up on this. Jump attack for the, the distance. Those slashes there, you just want to back away or roll away. You don't want to deal with her just standard slashes that don't have a... A visual cue. They're extremely dangerous. This is the double swipe attack that I said looks different if you're far away. Just be mindful of that. This attack here, just she just beautifully showed both examples. React. She didn't follow up. Punish. Dodge that. Backwards. Punish. Over her shoulder, backwards. You can't punish the quick follow-up after the triple slash. Only the the slower one. You can punish that if you want. Jumping attacks are very good if your weapon doesn't have the best range. But always be mindful of your stamina. But once you understand her moves, it's she's actually pretty simple to deal with at this part. Usually like to, in phase one like this, usually like to punish her twice. But be careful. That there, she has a very, very small chance of backing up. After she doesn't attack, it's very it's a very small chance, but it can happen. Usually she doesn't attack quickly after it, but if you see it, you want to roll immediately, otherwise you'll get hit. Uh, that's pretty much her phase one, though, uh, besides Waterfowl. Let's move on to Waterfowl, which is much more difficult and will require practice. So before we get into the fight and have a look at Waterfowl, let's talk about it a little bit, because some things need to be understood. Waterfowl is the move that I showed at the very, very beginning of the video. The huge flurry attack split into three parts. And how you deal with Waterfowl will change depending on what range you're at compared to, as opposed to Millennia. So you've got an up close way of dealing with it, a mid range way. If you imagine that Millennia is the fog game, there's an up close way of dealing with it, a mid range way of dealing with it, and a uh, a long range which is anything you know super long range but usually she won't waterfowl if you're like this far away so the up close one is the hardest one execution wise to dodge uh, even though it's easier once you learn it to take no damage opposed to the mid range the mid range is once you know the fight and the move the mid range waterfowl is the one you really don't want to happen because you're likely going to take damage. You're pretty much going to take a little bit of damage. And the far long range one is very easy to dodge for the most part. So if we imagine that Melania is standing here and she jumps up to go to a waterfowl and we're up close like this, so we're right in her face. What you want to do is recognize that she's starting waterfowl and you want to lock off. It's very important to lock off. And you want to run round her. Now this will take a bit of practice because even though she's in the air and you, you can't actually go underneath her. There's like an invisible wall 
underneath her, and you need to wrap around that invisible wall, and you need to be careful not to run into it. So it takes a little bit of practice to uh, wrap around her, but you want to lock off, wrap around her, and roll twice. You can go the other side, so you can go anti-clockwise and then roll to the right, but I prefer to lock off, run clockwise, and double roll left to dodge the first flurry, which is extremely difficult to dodge. I, I actually don't know any other way of dodging Waterfall from up close, and up close is the one that's going to happen most often because she's going to do it as you're attacking her, or just as you're getting ready to attack her. So let's go over the up close one. So her waterfowl will not come out until you deal about 20% of her max health. So there's no chance of it happening right now. But now, now it can come out at any time. So I'm going to stay up close and try and uh, dodge it. Here it is. Right, then you want to roll into her, and then roll into her. I kind of messed up there at the very end. But that's... That's how you deal with it up close. I'll, uh, I'll try and get it again. So once you break that... HP threshold, there's, she's very likely to do it quickly, but after that, she can do it whenever she wants, so you always have to be wary. That's why it's important to know how to uh, dodge the, uh, the waterfowl from up close. So she can actually do it now. If you get clips on that second attack, it's fine. It just means you rolled a little bit early. But that's how you dodge, dodge it for the most part. If you get hit once or twice, it's not the biggest deal. Eventually, you'll you'll get it to where you'll mostly never get hit. It's definitely more difficult to do this while talking. But the hardest part, the hardest part of Waterfowl, of doing this strat specifically, is the wraparound. You'll find yourself getting caught on Millennia when you do this at first. You'll get caught on Millennia and you won't be able to fully get the distance to roll left. And you'll end up taking huge damage and it'll feel terrible. Uh, this, this will take practice. It, it will just take practice, but you'll get it. You can definitely get it. It's not that difficult once you understand it and you've put some time into it. All right. Now let's move on to the mid-range and long-range waterfowl. Out of the three, this is the one you really don't want to see if you're looking to avoid every hit. This will most likely come out after you have like dodged out of an attack and then she just performs a waterfowl out of nowhere it also you'll be forced to revert to this strat if you're close and you don't react fast enough to wrap around you'll want to do this strat if you are at mid-range like let's pretend millennia is the fog game if you're like here and she goes up to waterfowl you can if you're fast enough do the up close strat wrap around her and Double roll, but it is tight and you have to react quickly. Most of the time, you're not gonna want to do that. Instead, what you want to do is notice she's gone up for waterfowl. You want to run away, and just before she hits you during the first flurry, you want to jump. You shouldn't get stagger broken at all, and you'll be able to finish off the uh, combo easily just by rolling into her during the second one and then rolling into her again for the third. So let's see what it looks like. This is unlikely to happen. Most of the time, it'll be an up-close waterfowl, but it depends on how aggressive you're being and when she does it, because she can just pull it out whenever she wants.
so she should be able to waterfowl now. So she can also waterfowl when you do like a jumping attack or just attack her and then she armors through it and goes up. At that point, so like here I was late, there's the jump. And then just dodge into her twice. That's the mid range or if you are long range and you're slow to react or if you're close range and slow to react. That's the one that uh, you don't want to have to deal with but sometimes you're forced to because Either you're stuck in an animation up close, or you just didn't react. Or she she did it, and you were just about to heal. That's a rare one, because you shouldn't ever heal up, up close to Millennia. But you can if she's inside of an animation, and then she could just pull it out. But yeah, that's the mid-range one. And finally, for the waterfowl, we have the long-range one. This is the easiest one to deal with. It's simple. You just run away for the first two flurries, and the third flurry, you roll into her. You can jump, just like the mid-range one, if you're nervous about being hit. Just be wary of your stamina. Make sure you have enough. So now, at this point, where you know she can... So she's at this health, and you know she can waterfowl, and you're not confident with waterfowl at all, this is the long-range one. I lock off for the, for the roll, and then I like to roll in the opposite direction she goes. But you can just stay locked on and then roll straight into her. But that's the long-range one. It is by far the easiest one to dodge. As long as you're, like, this distance or something, before she starts and you run away reasonably quickly, you'll be fine to dodge the first two flurries. But you will be forced to roll into the third one. And that's Waterfowl. Alright, let's get on to phase two. There are quite a few changes in this phase, so before we get into the fight, let's talk about things. She has some new attacks, some of which are very dangerous and deal a lot of damage. The moves that you were able to punish in phase one, you still can punish, except she has a chance now. She won't do it every time, but she has a chance to carry on attacking, and you'll have to dodge one extra attack before you can punish. Speaking of attacking her, that's changed a little bit now. You can only really hit her once once at a time, because every single time you hit her, there's a small chance she'll counter with a kick, and you'll want to be ready to dodge and counter her kick, and she'll have armor through it, so yeah. Another change is her aggression. She's going to be a lot more aggressive towards you, so you don't really have to worry about the neutral game much. She's mostly going to come at you with... Uh, kicks and swipes so let's go into phase two and uh, have a look at the moves and how to dodge them i'll see you there sorry one last thing before we get on into the fight this is very important i want to talk about how to dodge a spirit clone attack which is her most dangerous move outside of waterfowl in phase two so let's imagine that millennia is the fog game the move is very recognisable, she'll go up into the air and you'll have about 4 seconds before you get attacked by her first, the first spirit. Uh, you want to make sure that you're not too far away, uh, otherwise you'll end up rolling into a spirit with this strategy. So any range kind of like here, between here and the fog gate is, uh, is good and you have plenty of time to get yourself set up. So what you actually want to do is you'll wait for the first spirit and just before it comes at you, you want to roll backwards and roll backwards again to dodge the first two spirit clones. Now you don't need to do an instant roll, but it has to be a pretty fast roll like that. But I believe an, 
an instant roll will work as long as you don't dodge the first spirit too early. But uh, dodge roll back twice. And this part is the trickier part. The third spirit delays itself. So it's got a delayed attack. What you'll want to do after that second roll back is move forward and roll at the just before the spirit attacks. You'll dodge that spirit, but if you roll forward again, you'll dodge another spirit barely that comes in diagonally. And uh, that, that diagonal one diagonal one is the, the dangerous one in this uh, attack by far. And after you've rolled forward, you just want to move forward a little bit and you'll be safe from every spirit. And the only thing left is Millennia's final stab attack. Uh, which I like to roll left or right. You can roll back, but the timing has to be a little bit... You have to have a better timed roll just in case you, you roll into the hitbox. So it basically looks like this time-wise. You'll roll back, roll back, delay, roll, roll, walk forward, and then the final one comes like there. So now that you know what it lo what it looks like, or how to do it, let's have a look at the phase two and all of our attacks and see how everything's done. All right, time for phase two. So after the cutscene transition, she's always going to do the blossom attack. And the way you want to deal with that is you want to roll just as she shakes. You want to roll backwards and immediately run backwards. Keep running backwards until the screen shakes and then roll backwards. And it'll look like this. Maybe hard to see her first shake. It's pretty difficult to say, but she kind of stops and shudders. And that's how you dodge a blossom attack. You want to stay out of this until it fades away. It doesn't have to fade away completely, but... So a change I didn't mention is now all of her attacks have Scarlet Rod, but it shouldn't be a big issue. So we're going to employ the one hit at a time. Punish that kick. Because any time we hit her, she can attack. With that. Roll, punish it. This is the extension that I was talking about. So she can do that jump up in the air into slam after a lot of her moves. And some of her old moves have that little like pool puddle. So, right, here's the most dangerous attack. Roll back, roll back, delay the third, roll forward, wait, roll. Hopefully I'll be able to show that off again. I will, uh, I will go over that spirit clone in a separate part for sure, if I don't get it in this fight. So, we were talking how you can bait an attack like you don't want to heal up close because she'll input read you most of the time uh, you can actually bait an attack in phase two let me actually get away from her so if you this if you're really far away if she actually lets you <laughs> get far away like this she will respond to an estus with this and you can punish it but she may extend it with that but you can punish so if you do need to heal, if you're desperate for a heal, run away. Be careful with some of these advances though, she's a lot more aggressive. But just heal and she'll pretty much always respond with that. Uh, don't double heal because you don't have enough time. Never really talked about the grab, but yeah, she's got a grab. Pretty easy to, uh, to read. But I recommend to punish that move that you just saw here running jump attack but again only do one because of the potential kick and she's got armor so another aspect depending on what weapon you're using and uh i definitely use this in the speed run is you want to hit once and if you notice that she hasn't responded with a kick you want to hit again so you want to basically hit confirm. It's difficult though and risky. I'll show it off here, hopefully, without getting hit. Oh. 
That was it, but she went into this. Same deal, run back, screen shake, roll. So there's probably a lot going on right now. It's... Uh, with that attack, you can get... If you're quick enough towards it, you can get two or three swipes. This is a new attack, which I messed up. That, where she basically flies up, swings down, and then does three. Okay, roll back, roll back. Delayed, roll forward, roll forward. You'll see one of the spirits pass, go past you, behind you, and then just roll... Uh, at the correct time, and that's an extremely dangerous attack, and if you don't know how to deal with it, it is difficult to dodge, but once you know, it's not difficult. Be careful. Counter, punish. So these moves where she has extensions, you are safe to roll punish as normal, and you should have enough time as long as you don't have a slow weapon to uh, whiff it, but still have enough time to roll safely. That was an early roll there, and I took a tick of Scarlet Rock. This is a good time to heal if you need to. Yeah, this is pretty much phase two. She, she can do this as well. So always be careful. She can waterfowl in phase two at any time. Here's that Estus attack. It's a rare one, but she'll do it from an Estus. Don't ro don't roll into her on that slam, because you'll have to roll again to avoid the puddle. Your strength, extraordinary. And that's Millennia's second phase. The true Lord. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video helped. If it did, or you like the content, consider dropping a like and subscribing. Hope you have a lovely day. Take care.